Hey, Spencer Sutton here with Evernest, and I'm back with part six of the ultimate guide to renting your home. And this is all about the move in and communication. These are two very, very important parts. So we're assuming you've done all the work, you've marketed your house properly, you've collected applications, and you found your person slash people, and you're ready to move them in. Now, ideally, they're not gonna move in the very day that they hand you the application. You wanna, you know, hopefully there's a week or so, we are gonna recommend to you that when that application gets approved, you wanna give yourself like three or four days, and I'll tell you why. The reason you wanna give yourself a little bit of space there is because you need to go walk back through that house again. We always uh, do what's called a move-in walkthrough, and we just wanna check and double check and triple check to make sure that everything's working properly because what's going to happen is that if they go in there and something's broken, something's not working, you're gonna hear about it the very first thing. And you know what, it's, not, it's just not a great way to start off this relationship. So once you have your approved applicant, we're gonna recommend, again, walking through. I would have a checklist of everything you need to be checking, you need to check the heating, the air, all of the lights, make sure all the light bulbs are in there, Make you know, check all the doorknobs, check the garbage disposal. Uh, if you have a garage, check the garage that is working properly. I mean, walk through the entire house because you may find something that you're like, wow, didn't know this wasn't working or this, you know, we needed to clean this up. Go ahead and get all of that taken care of. So give yourselves a little buffer. We like typically five days, five business days, you may wanna do the same thing. And what you also may do is you may find that, oh, I've left some stuff in the property and I need to get it out. So what is the resident expecting when they go into property? The resident is expecting that everything works perfectly. They expect that everything is gonna be clean. So this is, this is a really good point. You might wanna have your property professionally clean. Now, if you're a neat freak and you love to clean, then you can do that, but uh, it, it might be helpful to have somebody go over there and just give it a good, deep scrub. Make sure that the paint looks good on the walls. Of course, you, you should have done all this before uh, you showed the property, before you marketed the property, but um, you just wanna go and make sure that it's, it's not dirty or dusty. If the property's been sitting there vacant for a while, sometimes it'll, you know, you'll have cobwebs here or there. Go through, clean it all up, make sure it's in good shape. And then I would uh, also, if you want to, you know, create a list of, uh, you know, the ways of like any kind of rules of the house that you want to create, any kind of things that they should know. Hey, here's how you do this. Here's how you do that. I think those things are important. That would be very, very helpful. Anything that you want to communicate to the resident that would cut down on the back and forth with email or them asking questions or them getting frustrated later on. Now, sometimes we'll have owners that come to us and, and tell us that they like they still want to store stuff in the attic. Like we want to store stuff in the attic we, or we want to store stuff in the garage or somewhere. We do not recommend this. When somebody's renting your house for market rate or renting your home, they expect to use the same space that you want to use. And so they're going to want to also use the attic. They're going to also want to use the storage. Maybe you have a storage shed out back or something like that. They're going to want to use those things. And it's real important that you give them access to it because they're paying for it. So this is something that we are asked a whole bunch. Uh, another thing that, that I know that people come to us every once in a while and say, I wanna leave all my furniture in there. Maybe they're moving somewhere and it's our, the housing already has furniture and they just wanna leave all their furniture. You're less likely, likely to rent your home when it's fully furnished, although some people do that, maybe corporate housing more so, but a lot of times people already have all their furniture. So what are they gonna do with the furniture if you're leaving all yours in there? Well, they're gonna go and put it in storage. So if you, if you wanna open up the people, the amount of people who can rent your place, then you need to have the entire house cleaned out. Uh, people also ask us, is it good to show the property with furniture? Not really. Uh, potential residents are used to seeing vacant houses. And so now sometimes if you already have a resident in there, they're used to seeing it when somebody's living in there. Maybe they, maybe they go ahead and put in an application before they even see the inside of the property. It happens sometimes in very, very hot rental markets. We do this, we have pre-showings or pre-marketing in places like 
uh, Denver and places like Nashville and uh, sometimes in Atlanta, there's just different circumstances. So you need to know and understand your market. Markets uh, like Chattanooga or Little Rock or Birmingham don't necessarily need pre-marketing. We really like to get the house perfectly ready before it's marketed because it gives us a greater shot at getting applications. So that is it. So that's it for the move in, kind of move in inspection. And then what I would do is the next thing you need to be aware of is just how you communicate with the resident. Set those expectations early. If you want them to communicate via text, then let them know that, give them your cell phone number. If you only want to handle things through an email, let them know that and uh, then you can expect that. And then also I would go ahead and let them know how often you want to come and inspect the property. We used to do this four times a year. Every quarter we would go inspect properties. But what we found is while our owners loved it because they loved getting the reports, pictures of inside the property and outside the property, the residents didn't like it at all. They felt like it was kind of an invasion of privacy when we were there four times because it seemed like, oh, we were just there three months ago and here we come again, emailing them, letting them know, hey, we're gonna come and inspect the property. So probably once, maybe twice annually is a good, a spot to land on that. We do this once a year for, for our owners and part of the reason is we want to show the owners how the residents are taking care of the property but we also want to make sure that there's not any kind of deferred maintenance items going on in the property that need to be addressed and so we just are checking and making sure all that's done. We also change the air filters and batteries in the smoke detectors to make sure that those things uh, don't just sit there for 12 months because I know in my own home it's hard enough for me to remember, hey, change the air filters, much less a resident, they're typically not thinking about it, but it's very, very good for your heating and air system to change those filters. So that is it. That is the move in and communication for your property because now you've actually got a customer living in the home and you need to make sure that customer is aware of how things get fixed, how the communication is going to go. And so in the next video, and I'm going to talk to you all about maintenance and, and how to set up yourself for success with maintenance. Anyway, hope that helps and I'll see you on the next video.